I'm Sally um, and today we are going to do a workshop about photographing your work from home. We're going to cover 2D work and 3D work, so flat stuff and not flat stuff. And I'm going to show you a couple of ways that I photograph my work at home using just some household materials and things like that. There are lots of different ways of doing it and some people have preferred ways of doing it. These are just ways that I've found that I've got some um, good pictures and uh, you don't need anything really except your smartphone and some bits of stuff around the house. I have a good old pile of books here and that's gonna help us out a lot and then I also have uh, this is my partner's phone which I'm gonna use as a prop because <laughs> uh, I'm using my phone right now. Uh, I've got a wooden spatula uh, which that will come in very very handy or will be revealed in a bit got some white tack which is going to be really useful and also some tape masking tape um, and I have some bits and pieces of artwork some different types of objects and things that I thought we would photograph just to kind of show you different ways that we can document uh, different items so starting off by looking at how to photograph 2d stuff um, we're going to start on a table and the, one of the most important things about photographing your work at home is the light, which I'm sure you guessed. So as you can see, I'm right by a window. You can see the billboards in my, outside my house. So I'm right by this window. Natural light is the best light that you can have for photographing your work um, because it spreads really well and it shows the colours to its truest form. So if you can be... Uh, near a natural light source that's great and indirect so at the moment because of the time of day the sun is going to start moving around here and it's going to start coming through my window so um, I'm hoping that that won't interrupt too much but indirect natural light is the best um, light that you can use for this um, and you might want to try different times of day to see like which is the best. Like if the sun comes straight in your window in the morning, maybe wait till the afternoon, something like that. So natural light is the best. Uh, and you also don't want to be in between the light source and you. So for instance, if I try to take a photo, you can see a shadow is appearing here. You don't want you to be in between you and the light. So maybe the window should be on one of your sides. Um, and then the light can come in from the side here. And we can compensate for some of the darker areas on this side in a way that I'll show you just now. So we've got our stack of books here, and this is going to be our kind of makeshift tripod. Um, I find that this technique works really well, and I've used it to film videos for you guys, and I've used it to take photographs of my work, and I, I do have a tripod, but I actually don't use it that much because I use this mostly. So I've got a stack of nice big heavy books here, and what I've also got is a spatula, like a kitchen spatula. Um, you could use chopsticks or something else. I'm going to use this, but you want something that's kind of flat and can basically be wedged into the books. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to wedge my spatula in between some of the books with one hand. <laughs> if you've got two hands free, then that's much easier. So wedge your spatula in so that it sticks out can see that there and that can become like a shelf for your phone so I'm gonna pop my other phone on top there like that and you can see that the phone is held nice and steady and it's the camera is underneath so it's going to take a picture of this section just here so I'm going to open up the camera and you can see if I put something underneath that is where we are going to be photographing. So you've got a nice big space uh, and uh, you've got a good height as well. So you can move your spatula around to be a different height if you want it to be closer, if you're photographing something quite small. Um, so that is a basic setup for how you photograph flat, small things. And I'm going to demonstrate by popping a piece of my work in here. And you can see that this is a bit small, so you could maybe move the spatula down. I would suggest moving your, your, your kind of prop down instead of zooming in, because if you zoom in, you lose quality. So I'm gonna move my spatula. I'm gonna pop you guys down a bit closer to the work now so we can get a bit better image there like that. 
and uh, you'll notice looking through the camera that maybe this side has got a little bit more shadow and you can see the shadow of my hand there. Um, so it might be that there's brighter on the side where the light is coming in, but darker on the side. Um, and uh, to, in, in order to compensate for that, what we can do is we can get a piece of card or paper, a white piece of card or paper, and we can pop it to the side. And what that does is that compensates and it reflects the light. So if I take it away, you can see that there's much more shadow. Pop it down and there's a lot less shadow. So you can use that to balance the light a little bit on yours. And always remember, you can crop. we can crop your photos uh, really easily. So don't worry if there's some things around the outside. But try and get your camera as close to your work as possible without getting too close. And then we can just go ahead and take some pictures. And because this is nice and steady, this setup is really nice and steady, so you're not going to get hand shaking or anything like that. Um, it's going to create much sharper, crisper pictures and you're not going to get any movement. So I really suggest propping your phone on something when you're taking your pictures. Because as you can see, I'm holding mine with my hands now and even now it's just slightly wobbling around. Um, to To stop that even more, what you can do on your phone is you can go onto the timer and you can put on a timer so that then when you when you choose to take your photo, you're not going to knock your um, phone and make it blurry. So I'm going to tap and it's going to give me a timer so nothing's going to touch it when it takes a picture. Like that. So that is your basic home photography studio there for flat work and things like that. So you've got your stack of books, your spatula with your phone on top, and if you want a piece of white card or paper to balance out the light. And this works for small 3D items as well. So I'm going to pop this in there. And you can see that similarly, we get quite a good shot of this. And you could zoom in if you wanted a little bit. And then you can play around with moving it. You might want to turn like that and we'll really see the difference in the piece of white paper here so if I take it away you can see how dark it is on one side and then if I put it back down it really brightens up that side so if you're photographing um, 3d work I really suggest popping a bit of paper on the shadowy side and that'll really help and again we'll take a couple of pictures of these here and using the timer so we're not knocking the camera at all so we get a nice crisp image um, and uh, if you've got like a series of work so I've got a couple of things here that I'm going to put down you can photograph them separately or together it's up to you so these things all kind of go together and you can decide what you think is best and if you have kind of a an item that's a little bit difficult to get to stay still then you could use a little blob of blue tack to get it to stay in place go so I've got a little blob of blue tack and I might just pop it on the back of this item here so that it'll stay up there we go so then you can see through my camera we can move this around to get a better shot and it's zoomed in at the moment so you could zoom out. You want a little bit of space around your the photo of your work. So you don't want it to be really, really tight in like this. That's too close and it's not got enough space for us to, to edit and crop. So we'll zoom back out. So you've got plenty of space around it, but it's still gonna take a good picture. And again, you can see if I remove my side piece of white work, uh, white paper, you can see very shadowy not as shadowy, so it makes a bit of difference. So you can take your picture, and again, using my um, timer to get a good picture. Fab, that is my little studio that I've set up there for you, using books, a spatula or some chopsticks or anything like that, a bit of white paper. You want to make sure that your background is neutral as well so that your colors show up really nice and 
bright. So I always try and put it on a white background um, and that balances out the colours of your work as well. And also you don't want it to be busy or uh, anything to be in the background to distract from your work. So a nice clean white background is best. So this is for photographing slightly bigger work. And um, as you can see, I've got a piece of work stuck up on a wall, white wall, again with the window to the side. So there's the window, there's the work. And that means I'm not gonna get in between the light source and the work. And what I've done here is I've popped a little, um, this is like a plant stand or a little table in front. And that's what I'm gonna use for my tripod. So you could use a table, a chair, anything really that's gonna let, allow you to prop your phone up. And I've used some books to make a little prop so that I can have it propped up like that, can you see? And that means I can see what I'm taking a picture of. And I've tried to place my work at the right level for my makeshift tripod so that it's nice straight on angle. Because if it's off to one side or another, then uh, the work will be a bit distorted and it won't look as good. So you want it to be nice and straight down the line. Keep your camera as parallel to the work as possible. So that's just a couple of books. And what I've done is I've put one book slightly back so that you can prop your phone onto it there. You can see that it's nice and straight on there. And again, I'm gonna use the timer to help me get a good photo. So I'm just gonna very delicately press and it's gonna take a picture. I really recommend using the timer for taking your photos because it just means you're not gonna knock the phone when you press the the shutter. Um, yeah, and I've just used Bluetack to blue tack my work up like that there. Um, so you can just use Bluetack or a little bit of tape. And again, you can see that there's enough space around the picture. Uh, let's see if we can get the picture up actually. So you can see there's plenty of space around the picture for us to crop it later on. Um, so you want a little bit of space around it and it's also not been distorted by being too close. So a bit of space around your picture. So that is your little kind of makeshift tripod for bigger work. You could also prop your work up like down on the floor if you don't have a table or anything like that. So for instance, if we take this lovely picture of Frida Kahlo that somebody made for me, you could just prop your work up on the floor like that and take your picture low down, down like this. So if you don't have a table or anything or wall that you can stick on, you can do it on the floor as well. So I've made this little studio down on the floor and all I've done is I've taken a big piece of white paper and I've stuck it to the wall so that the paper hangs down, hits the um, floor and then curves around. So you get this lovely kind of, once we zoom in a bit, you get a really good white space for anything 3D. And I'm just going to place this inside. There we go. And again, what I'm going to do, you can see this massive shadow down here. So I've got my white piece of paper and I'm just going to pop that there. And I'm going to hold that. And you can see it slightly cancels out the shadow. And the closer it is, the less shadow you're going to get. If there's some shadow, it's totally fine. It's completely fine. And um, so with this one, you can see that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You can take a photo and try and get enough space around it so that we can crop it. And then you get a nice neutral background. And the reason that I've put this piece of paper in here is because with a glass item, you can see through it, it might be a little bit confusing. So if you want to be able to see your design on something like glass, then I suggest popping a bit of paper inside, rolling it up so that it's the right size. And then I'm not gonna do this, but you could cut this off here so that, to make sure that it's the right height so that it just fits nicely inside your glass item and uh, it shows off the work to its best. And I would say the same with taking a photograph in this little setup. You want to make sure that you've got your props. So the pile of books, you could just bring this pile of books, put it down here and use that to take your photos in this 
little art studio. The bigger your piece of paper, the more space you will have. So you could maybe get like a size, like an A1 piece of paper would be really, really great. If you don't have a piece of paper, fabric would also work okay. Um, nice plain white bit of fabric if you give it an iron first perhaps. Um, and that could be really good. Um, or you could just, if you've not got a big piece of paper but you've got a small one, then we could just pop the paper on the floor against a white wall. And that will still create quite a plain space for our item to be photographed in. So the most important thing is to remember that you want your background to be really plain uh, because your work is the most important part of the uh, the photograph and you want that to, to sing. Sometimes it's tempting to put the props and things in but I would suggest for this not to because what we're probably going to do is we're going to crop the picture so that we only get your piece of work and the rest of this background will go away so that's that's uh, one reason not to use any props or anything like that um, and don't worry if you get things like bits of floor and edges in and stuff because we can crop that out but you just want a nice quality image with your piece of work in the middle close enough but not so close that it doesn't have any space around it and that's kind of it. So I'm going to just quickly go over a couple of the most important points. So important, important point number one is natural light. So if you can get next to a window so that you've got your light coming in here and you're not in between the light source and the picture. Uh, and that needs to be indirect light as well if possible. Uh, so important point number two, um, a neutral background. So I've gone for a white background here and that means that this just is much more uh, focused on the work itself. We're not busying the background with anything like that. Um, and that means that your work will be the focus. Number three tip, a straight on angle. So you want your your ca the camera and the pieces to be parallel to each other. If we tilt this like this, you can see that that changes the work, distorts the angle, and it's much harder to represent the work properly. So a nice straight on shot is best. Um, top tip number four, if you can, then create some sort of tripod or stand for your phone so that you can so you don't have to hold it because if you hold it, as you can see, I'm holding it now, it's much less steady. Whereas if I put it down on the spatula, it's really still. And to extend that even further, use your self timer so that you can press the shutter and let it um, take the photo without you touching anything. So that's a special extra top tip. And number five is take lots of photos. Take at least three or four, but more if you think that's a good idea so that you've got a selection to choose from you can go back later on and say oh actually I preferred it when they were closer together or when they were further apart or you know the lighting at that time of the day was better or something like that so take lots of photos whilst you've got your little setup done you could even take photos of multiple pieces of artwork so for instance if I'd finished taking up pictures of this one I could pop that to the side and I could take a photo of a different piece of work. So you can take photos of lots and lots of work once you've got your setup, and I recommend doing that, just kind of getting them all out of the way. Um, and things like fabric can be photographed much the same way. So this is a piece of fabric and laying it out flat and taking a photograph um, with our little kind of tabletop studio is probably the best idea. Um, we'll do it. All right, guys, I hope this was useful. And if you have any questions, then please do get in touch. Um, all right, see you later. Bye.